Good morning. Uh, today is July 20th. And we will start with a daily reflection on the Old Testament. Um, all right. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Psalm 51.5. In Psalm 51, the fallen King David, in agony over his sins, described the state of unredeemed humanity. Because the Latter-day Saint view of the fall is much more optimistic than that which is taught throughout Christendom, from the revealed truth that our first parents went into the Garden of Eden to fall, that their transgression was part of the fall Father's plan, and that it was forgiven through the blood of the Redeemer. We sometimes forget that the fall does indeed affect all forms of life. Although we are not accountable for Adam and Eve's transgression, we are certainly affected by it, both physically and spiritually. <sighs> we are conceived in sin in that we are born into a world of sin. Conception is that is the means whereby the conception is the means whereby a fallen nature mortality yep mortality the flesh is transmitted to the posterity of Adam and Eve we are thus in desperate need of redemption and deliverance which the infinite atonement affords us okay I have no thoughts on that one, but today is um, Ezra chapters 5 and 6, and um, Starla and I were talking yesterday about how we haven't really been understanding the chapters lately. We haven't really been, you know, there's a definite theme sometimes when, you, when you're going through the Doctrine and Covenants. And then there's a definite theme in the Book of Mormon. Uh, but I haven't really been able to pick out the themes, if you've noticed, during each individual day. And then generally you're supposed to take it as a whole. You know, take Ezra chapters 1 through 7 and Nehemiah chapters 2 through 8 just as a whole and find the the theme there um, but we've been having trouble trying to understand what these chapters are about maybe we need to go back to the podcast and and have a little bit of help but um i suppose if we just look at the the come follow me and what the people who designed it had in mind when they picked out these chapters and why they grouped them together. Um, I believe this, as we've been noticing this week, is about building the temple and its importance. In chapters, in chapter five, um, two prophets prophesy. Zerubbabel, Babel renews the building of the temple. The Samaritans challenged the Jews' right to continue their building work. And then in chapter 6, Darius renews the decree of Cyrus to build the temple. It is finished and dedicated, and sacrifices and feasts commence again. So, definitely there's um, a theme in these chapters. The importance of a temple. Um... Uh, I suppose let's just let's just get into it. A guided by prophets, the monumental developments taking place during the period of time covered in the Book of Ezra were overseen and guided by prophets of God, including Haggai and Zechariah, both of whom contributed books to the sacred canon of the Old Testament. The rebuilding of the temple at Jerusalem was not accomplished without the direct, the direct involvement of prophetic ministers, and with them were the prophets of God helping them. Um, I 
I think that's self-explanatory. And then it talks about Zerubbabel, Babel. Um, just how to pronounce it. He's the grandson of Jeroiachin, king of Judah. Uh, he was appointed governor over Judea in the Persian authority when Cyrus issued his decree. Yada, yada, yada. Scholar Sidney B. Sperry indicates the nature of the rebuilt temple. The plan of Solomon's temple was followed in general, but due to the poverty of the people, not on such a lavish scale. Many of the vessels used in the former temple were restored. The Holy of Holies was empty, for the Ark of the Covenant disappeared when Nebuchadnezzar's forces invaded Palestine. This temple, called after Zerubbabel and sometimes known as the Second Temple, was completed in the sixth year of Darius, 15, 515 BC. So there's that. Um, it talks about Darius and it talks about uh, Artaxerxes. And I guess. Darius is mentioned in the book of Ezra as the Persian king who renewed the decree of Cyrus permitting the rebuilding of the temple at Jerusalem following the Babylonian captivity. Here's what I was noticing last night as I was listening because I had a headache and I was tired and I find it easier to listen to the scriptures on my phone than to sit down and read them when I'm tired or have a headache. Anyways, what I was noticing in the reading of these two chapters is how, how willing the people are now to build the temple and to be grateful for it and to worship in it and to offer sacrifices and like, I guess the captivity is needed. You know, they're prosperous, they're doing great, and they turn to false idols continually. And then they get captured, and and they're like, oh, well, maybe we, we need to go back to our God, and maybe we need to rebuild this temple and read the book of the law. Sorry. It's just this constant, like, I don't know, it's like the, the Layman and Lemuel mentality. In times of good, it's like, eat, drink, and be merry, and forget that stuff. Who cares about that stuff? And then it's like, times of trouble, and it's like, oh gosh, we're gonna die. Let's, let's pray. A, a fickle faith. I mean, the Lord knew that they needed to be in captivity. You know, he He brought them out of Egypt to bless them. And, I don't know. It's just this never-ending cycle of, of not following Heavenly Father. And I guess the lesson here is, are we like that? Do we have this never-ending cycle of false idols, captivity, repentance, you know, uh, I, I guess following the Savior, or repentance should be up here and then following the Savior, but it shouldn't be down, following the Savior, and, you know, just this constant cycle of, do we have those issues? Do we have those problems? <sighs> All right. It's the 20th. Yes. All right. And now I will leave you with a prayer from a diary of prayer. Um, this is Office Hymn for Prime. I don't know what that means. Now that the daylight fills the sky, we lift our hearts to God on high that he in all we do or say would keep us from free from harm today, would guard our hearts and tongues from strife, from anger's din would hide our life. 
from all ills, ill sights would turn our eyes, would close our ears from vanities. So we, when this new day is gone and night in turn is drawing on, with conscience by the world unstained, shall praise his name for victory gained. All laud to God the Father be, all praise eternal Son to thee, all glory as is ever met to God the Holy Paracelet, P-A-R-A-C-L-E-T-E. All right. That was Ezra, chapters 5 and 6. I know it wasn't the best, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. Okay, I love you all. I'll stop yawning at you. Have a great day. Talk to you later.